So here we have garlic mustard, uh, Aliaria petiolata, which is actually a biennial species. So when seeds come into your woodlot, it's gonna spend its first year producing a small basil rosette that looks like this. This is as tall and as big as it's going to get. Um, and so you'll see this little cluster of round leaves with these small serrations on it, pretty rounded. Um, and it's a pretty, pretty unmistakable plant. You can actually crush it up and smell it. And sometimes it's got kind of a, a weird garlicky odor to it. Um, and then the second year is when this basil rosette dies back to the roots over the winter. And the second year it puts out this much taller flowering stalk um, with these four petaled white flowers. And that's when it starts to go to seed. And once this species goes to seed in the second year, it will die back completely um, and just relies on the seed bank to continue its, its process in that woodlot. And some of the problems with garlic mustard is that its root system actually produces chemicals that can interfere with other plants' ability to survive in an area. Um, there's also some different interactions with excess of deer browse in areas and earthworms, non-native earthworms, that can, between the three of those, impact a lot of our native wildflower species, especially spring ephemeral wildflowers. We have a rare West Virginia butterfly, West Virginia white butterfly, which normally lays its eggs on our native toothwort species, uh, spring ephemeral wildflower. And unfortunately, not only does garlic mustard push toothwort out, it also smells very similar to toothwort in terms of its chemical signature that it puts out. So the West Virginia white butterfly is tricked into laying its eggs on these leaves. And when its eggs hatch into larvae, the caterpillars can't feed and reproduce on the garlic mustard, so they starve. The best thing to do if you've got some in your woodlot is in that first year to hand pull, or maybe if you do have a general herbicide, spray, carefully spray those first year basil rosettes. Um, the second year, oftentimes people want to go through and organize garlic mustard pools um, where they pull these second year plants that are much easier to find, much easier to grab and yank out of the ground. If you leave this in the woodlot, these seeds that have started to form here, even if it's pulled out of the ground, they will continue developing and they will set seed for that second year. So what you need to do if you're pulling out these adult plants, you can come through, you can pull them, and make sure that you bag them in a trash bag or something like that, and properly dispose of them someplace where their seeds can't go to fruit and produce new plants. One way to avoid having it come into your property is to seek out uh, different areas of your woodlot or different areas of your property and keep an eye out for new species like this one. Uh, if you're mowing roadsides or mowing uh, areas of your property, if you do have a pocket of garlic mustard, make sure you're not mowing and spreading these seeds this time of year or later in the year further around on your property. Um, and as soon as you spot a small patch of it, uh, if you're diligently looking and keeping your eye out for something new, that's when you want to remove it um, as soon as you can.